Hey booktube, let's talk about the Ivy duology by Amy Engel. I got my ticket for the long way round. I'm Jen and I talk about audiobooks and the two audiobooks I want to tell you about today are The Book of Ivy and The Revolution of Ivy which comprise the Ivy duology by Amy Engel. These are narrated on audio by Taylor Meskimen who is a really good narrator for this series. This is one of my top favorite series, YA series of all time, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. So I wanted to tell you about it, uh, all the reasons I did love it. First of all, it's a duology, and thank goodness that Amy Engel was not tempted to throw a, a second book in there and make it a trilogy, because it was perfect the length that it was. Enough things happened that if she wanted to do a companion series or continue it on later, it's perfect but everything got wrapped up and it didn't get stretched out and have some book in the middle that suffered from middle book syndrome. Yeah, really good idea to make it a duology. Here are some things that you need to know about this story. First of all, there was a world war that happened and it decimated the United States. A guy named Westfall founded a town made up of the refugees from this war and it is located in the Ozark Mountains of the United States. As more people came into the town, some questions were raised about the town and the way it was being governed by the West Falls. There was a civil war that erupted in this small town of 20 to 30,000 people, and the West Falls lost. The people on the opposing side elected the Latimers as the president, Mr. Latimer as the president, and now the Latimers head up the government that governs the entire town. The peace treaty between the two factions dictates that the daughters of the people on the side of the West Falls have to marry the sons of the people on the side of the Latimers. But this was the way that they decided that they would keep the two sides united despite their differences. The sons and daughters are about 16 when they marry because the main idea here is that they need to grow the population and they're most uh, able to do that between the ages of about 16 and 25. And so, yeah, the idea is let's get these kids married and have them have babies and then we'll have more people. It is between 50 and 60 years later after the town was founded and Ivy, since she is the granddaughter of Mr. Westfall, who founded the town, is slated to marry Bishop Latimer, who is the son of the president. And the reason that they have to marry each other is because of the town's history between the Latimers and the Westfalls. The Westfalls blame the Latimers for the death of Ivy's mother and the general bad running of the government. They don't like the way that they've done it and there is a lot of bitterness. And as such, they have decided to overthrow this government and they lead a small group of revolutionaries. Ivy's job is to kill Bishop Latimer so that in doing that, she can put the whole revolt into play. There were a lot of interesting issues that this story raised, uh, some of which were loyalty to family, trust, realizing there are two sides to every issue. Even in a society where something's always wrong, something is also always right. Does the punishment fit the crime? What it takes to survive in a wilderness with nothing? And patience is good and it will pay off in the end. This story has all been done before, but the writing and the way it unfolded was very fresh. The romance unfolded very slowly, and the two main characters, Ivy and Bishop, became good friends, and they were allowed to be friends. They allowed each other to kind of come into a close friendship, which was so important because in any marriage, you should marry your best friend. Your marriage is going to last if you marry your best friend because when all the infatuation is gone, then you have that solid friendship, that solid basis on which you can continue and rely on when things get really hard. When Ivy shows this extraordinary love and loyalty towards her family, you don't sense that 
the plan is wrong or ridiculous or unreasonable, what you see is the strength of Ivy's character in that. So that's really what shines through, even though you are aware that the plan is kind of flimsy. There's a plot twist that happens and it's completely unexpected and it just really makes the plot even more complex than it already is, which, you know, that's always a good thing when you're reading along. It's not predictable and it just made the story even more enjoyable. Ivy's character continues to grow and change throughout the series and I think one of the things that Amy Engel did really, really well was to let her process what she had to deal with without driving us crazy. She was just working through it. And about the time that you would think, come on, Ivy, things would resolve and Ivy would get a clue. That made a huge difference in the way that it was written because it maintained the tension without making me as a reader really frustrated with the main character. Amy Engel didn't lead us down a path and then abandon us and just wait to resolve all the issues until the end. I never felt like I was being strung along or manipulated. I felt drawn down a very logical path which was completely in line with the character's thinking. The ending did seem a little overblown, but it wasn't out of context with the story. It really made for a very exciting conclusion. Overall, I thought it was written well. I thought the story moved along right as it should, and I loved the characters. I really enjoyed the story. So those are my thoughts on the Ivy duology. And if you've read this, I would love to know what you think. So let's talk about that. And that's it for now for me. I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Me by my talk, oh, you're gonna miss me when I'm gone.